Hi, welcome to Pictures, Noise and Words. I'm Hedgy, and this is some classic music. This is Yes. Yes are among a very small bunch of bands that invented prog and got away with it. There are a lot of bands from the 70s that you could say, put, you know, put prog together. You've got Yes, you've got Genesis, you've got Rush, um, got Pink Floyd obviously and then there's bands that you don't hear about so much anymore because they're not bands anymore you know like people like Uriah Heep or whoever and they, they it's basically when you get people who are very good musicians and they don't want to play metal which didn't really exist then of course but they don't want to you know that there's a limit to how far they want to go they want to do big um, uh, big pieces of music big big compositions excuse me big compositions which is it's probably the best word for it so prog rock was born basically and they realized well you can incorporate all different instruments into it there's no there's no limit to what we can do and we can have songs with different movements in their mind different sections you know so um when i was about seven um i heard close to the edge an album by yes uh, um, I, th I can't remember what year Close to the Edge came out, but it was before that. And um, that was the album. The first track on it is like 18 minutes long. And then I, as a, as a seven-year-old, heard this and just could not stop playing it. And Which is a bit odd, really, seven-year-old listening to prog rock. But it had an impact on me. It's such an impact that it's changed. it changed how I listen to music for the rest of my life. I... Re that that's the thing that made me realize that music is something that you can get into that you, that there's more to it than meets the eye that there's more to it than than Slade being played on the radio or Alvin Stardust or whoever was being played in the early 70s it, that's that's close to the edge by yes was the thing that just hooked me into music and I it never let go of me and it changed you know I went through punk I went through two-tone if anyone remembers what two-tone is all the scar movement I, w I wasn't a fan of it but but I could appreciate it you know and I could appreciate punk and then the, the new romantic era of the very early 1980s when I went a bit more poppy but uh, and then, you know Iron Maiden where I came along and Metallica came along and, and, da -da 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 -da, and that's like your musical journey but yes is where it all began for me um, so I went to find song um, by yes and I thought roundabout's a good one it's it's an it's an easier to listen to song than a lot of yes songs shall we say but the problem with yes is is that they're if you try to find a video of them you're gonna be looking at some concert footage from 1973 or something there is more up-to-date stuff but I'm trying to get the classic yes sort of feel and um, obviously the sounds not great and the and the video is grainy however yes were incorporated into the rock and roll hall of fame last year and they played together at the ceremony. Um, you will never see this lineup of Yes because they don't really like each other anymore. <laughs> but it was the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction, so they came together and did this show. And as a bonus, Geddy Lee from Rush is playing the bass on this track. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is the absolute classic lineup of Yes with Geddy Lee on bass. Um, because the bass player from Yes died, I think. Um, so a bit tricky to get him in for the gig. Um, so yeah, Geddy Lee on bass, total bonus. Here's Roundabout from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction. Uh, I'll just click some buttons, and if I click them in the right order, it will all work. <laughs>
so great do you see it pop up with owner of a lonely heart at the end i hate that song it's the it's the one yes song i just cannot stand it just doesn't it's just not it just isn't yes to me that song and it became so popular Arr, how dare people like things that i like <laughs> um yeah did you see all the artwork popping up in the background? That's an artist, well, this artist, called Roger Dean, who did all of their album covers. And he always drew all of these amazing um, sort of floating mountains. And the film Avatar, not, I mean, the James Cameron one, not the stupid airbender movie, the, the big, long, stupid James Cameron one instead, with the, and that had all of floating rocks and stuff. As soon as I saw that, all I could think of was Roger Dean. Um, so whether he had a hand in it or whether he's suing them, one or the other. Irrelevant, but you know, bonus information. <clears throat> so yeah, <laughs> so yes, <laughs> roundabout. It's just great. I, I don't know, but I think it would be pretty hard for someone to get into yes now. Because you're going back to albums from such a long time ago that have a, have a sound of their own and, and have a sound of the time they were made in. You know, the production the sounds like it, it's got that 70s sound to it. Which some people love, I get, I, I get that. But I think most people love that who grew up with it. I don't think many people who have never, you know, who were born in the 90s say, I can't imagine you going back and listening to stuff like Yes from the 70s and and, and it having as, as big an impact on you. Whereas, of course, I grew up with it. So that's like a, that is the sound of, of my, well, it's kind of the sound of my formative years, shall we say, in music. Though, having said that, if there's one thing I love, it's fantastic bang up to date production on albums. I love what has happened in music production my point if I ever make one is just I think it would be difficult for somebody who didn't grow up with that sound to hook into it a small percentage will of course there's always a small percentage who you know whatever I say won't happen a small percentage of people are doing it but yeah I'll stop talking now I knew that when I did yes I knew I would just talk and talk and talk because I could just go you know if I played a different song by them I'd probably have a whole I probably talk and talk just for as long, just slightly differently. You know, it's such a part of my part of my life, really. So, some classic music. Um, I never intended to do classic music when I started this channel, and then I realised that a lot of people my age are watching it, which came as a surprise. I always thought that most people who watched stuff like this were, I don't know, teens and twenty and early twenties. Um, but according to YouTube's analytics on you people, a lot that there are more people my age watching this than any other age group, which is just I, I'm just so surprised. So I think you'll be you're the obvious audience for that, 
and if you're younger and you don't know about this hopefully you enjoyed it anyway let me know and uh, thanks for watching i'll see you soon thanks bye bye